From our national security interest, we have to be influential in the world in areas that are critical to our way of life and to all, a lot of other folks in the world way of life. The United States is the leader in, if we can't get capability out there from a military perspective to deter aggression and then to employ that capability, we won't be able to meet our strategic objectives. So the idea is we've got to maintain our tactical advantage and that means that we've got to get advanced technology into the hands of our warfighters and we've got to do it faster because what we're finding is that our adversaries are able to keep pace with us at a, at a rate that we haven't experienced really since World War II. If you act not as quick as your competitor, you will go out of business real quick. So we're in a situation in the strategic environment where there is no number two. We have to be number one. We have to continue to influence the world for the strategic interest. So the tactical advantage is gained through staying ahead of them from a technology standpoint. The criticality becomes getting that technology into the hands of the warfighter sooner than our enemies. Where we have to get faster is the development of products to get them out to the fleet. Where we're doing it now is the old way of doing business is 10, 15, 20 years. Our competitors are acting within five. The systems engineering process right now, we have something we refer to as the systems engineering V, which is it's the process by which I have an operational requirement for a system that NAVAIR might deliver to have certain capabilities. We can't just build something. There's a lot more definition that has to occur. We have to take that operational requirement, decompose it into performance requirements and into detailed design requirements and ultimately detailed fabrication requirements so that the blue collar folks on the line can actually build this thing. Collectively, each of those decisions, design decisions on paper, would require meetings, delivery of mail, delivery of artifacts, the government would have some oversight, and that takes time. That process is, is paper, it's very paper-based, and it's very monolithic and serialized, and it typically takes about 10 years to get from stated operation requirement to all the way down and back up the other side of the VTOR, I've got my first full-up test aircraft. And it takes another five to eight years to go through testing and operational testing and get it out to the fleet. So we're looking at 15 to 20 years to get the next major weapon system or aircraft out to the fleet. So where digital transformation comes in is the ability to uh, compress the timeline from 20 years, 15 years, down to five. And that's the, that's the future of where we need to go with digital, uh, digital transformation. We call it transformation because we're wiping the V out. We, we call it blowing up the system engineering V. This can be misinterpreted as eliminating the discipline associated with the process, but that's not true. We're actually increasing it. It's just that advances in high performance computing and associated modeling allow us to perform the same functions concurrently. The new process would be we're engaging instead of sitting at our desk waiting for information to, to come to us in the form of paper. Instead of specifications we would have digital models where you could actually visualize the thing that you're starting to build. We can now assess it um, by sitting at our computer and having the contractor sit in his facility and have a conversation on our computer screen. You'll be in a digital environment and you'll have a kind of single source of truth of a model of the product that you're trying to get out there. Now we can have direct communications looking at the same thing digitally in, in, in real time. And, and that allows us to do our insight and oversight role and allow the contractor to proceed to the next step when he's ready to proceed to the next step and not experience some of this lag. And that's how you compress the timeline because everybody's looking at the model and the model is the, the replication of what systems you're buying, and then you can make decisions, design decisions on a daily basis and empower it to make those decisions. And that's where we're gonna be able to get the time out. We've gotta be swinging for the fences, and we really gotta be looking at cutting cycle times in half. And that is not gonna be done by following the current process. So that's why we call it transformation, not, you know, not some sort of you know, efficiency, trying to gain efficiencies out of an obsolete process. It's the way of the future, and it's imperative for our military and for our country. We have to get faster. We have to act faster from a military perspective, getting our capability out there. And that's why we've begun implementing this process today.
I think our very viability as an acquisition community is at stake here. If we can't deliver on our primary job, which is to, to keep our warfighters safe, then why are we needed? It's, it's as simple as that.